Hello out there and welcome to today's edition of your favorite show, The Diaspora. I am Coin Sola Adetsumbi and I'll be taking you through the program. First, let's look at the selfless gesture of one of our very own, Dr. Patrick Owubave. He led a team of medical professionals of the areas related to cardiology. They offered to forfeit their annual leave just to put smiles on people's faces. This happened at National Hospital Abuja. Take a look. I'm the CEO of Sperm Coil Philly Foundation. It just simply means hope for children. Um, we are trying to help build a cardiac and cardiothoracic service in Nigeria, which is still at the infancy stage. National Hospital has been extremely supportive. We are absolutely delighted that we have Honorable Abiker W. Rua here visiting with the team that we've got in to carry out three of that to carry out open heart surgery for children at the National Hospital. We have done 29 total in the last two years. Um, it's still ongoing. I mean, without these guys, we won't be able to do this. These guys have given up their annual leaves. We do not pay them. They are all volunteers. They've given up their time, energy to come and help build this service for Nigeria. At the far end is Dr. Ragu. Dr. Ragu is an intensive Intensivist. That is an intensive care doctor with over 15 years experience. Dr. Rango is based at the congenital heart disease center in Leicester called the Glenfield Hospital. Dr. Zina Makija. Dr. Zina trained in the UK and did her fellowship at the Mayo Clinic in the US. She is based in India, in one of the best centers in India for heart surgery. She has been to Kabul to donate her service. To Kabul. I don't think any of us here will go to Kabul. I won't, but she's so brave and I admire her a lot. Next to her is Dr. Nadia. Dr. Nadia is a pediatric cardiologist. She's based at the Glenfield Hospital in Leicester in the United Kingdom. Uh, she's a very experienced pediatric cardiologist with, again, over 15 years experience because we bring top specialists to Nigeria to train and build capacity for our system here. And last but not the least is Dr. Singha. She's a pediatric anesthetist. She also works at the Glenfield Hospital in Leicester in the United Kingdom. And I am Patrick Wobawe. I'm a family physician based in the UK. I think the message is that collaboration works. Collaboration helps. It's about you, know, you coming together to uh, change the lives of children. And I know that the Nigerian government will do all they can to, to support, and uh, just as the National Hospital is already supporting by subsidizing. So we hope that when people see what you're doing, there will be more collaborations, there will be more will to give back, there will be more selflessness. And we appeal to our medical practitioners in the diaspora. They've been coming on medical missions where we can make them more structured and more impactful. And like you think, think training is very critical. Training of our local staff and, and all that. So again, we thank you for being here. What I see here is a collaboration of probably four different charities coming together to make this happen. We've come here as part of Healing Little Hearts. Patrick's is supporting quite a lot of things. We've seen a other couple of other charities who are helping the patients fund the other work. So, so many people are trying to do something. We have a huge body of heart disease in children in Africa. We have what we call congenital heart disease, which is what we call hole in the heart. On top of that, we have an extra body of what we call acquired heart disease, where you have rheumatic heart fever, where a child would have a simple infection called tonsillitis, which is caused by a bacterial. If it's not properly treated with the cheapest antibiotics in the world called penicillin, it can actually go to the heart and destroy the heart valve. And if these children are not picked up on time, they will develop what we call heart failure. We've been coming to the National Hospital in the last two years. As of today, we have completed 31 open heart surgeries at the National Hospital and it's ongoing. We also 
because the actually the emphasis is not on operation, it's actually on training and capacity building. On this particular camp, we didn't come with a scrub nurse. We used to come with a scrub nurse. The National Hospital nurses are now trained enough to be able to assist the surgeon in the operations. Because when we normally come, we come with a full team of pediatric cardiothoracic surgeon and a congenital disease specialist, an interventional cardiologist, a pediatric anesthetist, two intensive care doctors, and four nurses so that they take on calls with the local team so that we share knowledge and we share what we do in the UK and around the world in specialized centers so that we can all grow and learn from it. There's opportunity for training. We have, in collaboration with the National Hospital, sponsored one of the cardiologists here to one of the best centers in India to be trained in pediatric cardiology year fellowship. So these, trainings, these training programs are ongoing. Nigeria is a huge country. We can afford to have centers, one in each geopolitical zone, that can become referral centers for children to be treated, just to start with. The local personnel, as well as the consumables that are required, the patients pay a nominal fee of uh, about between 500,000 to 2.5 million. That's all. That's not enough to pay for the surgeries, but we have to do that because we want the patients to afford the service locally. As you know, it would be more expensive if they had to do it outside Nigeria or in some other centers. We've had very good success rate uh, with the 29 surgeries he's talked about. In total, in the past uh, five years, we've done about 49 surgeries in this hospital. We currently do uh, two missions in a year. This is the second one, and we hope to do uh, 10 to 12 in this mission. Their dedication is on par parallel. They were able to start the first surgery at 6 a.m. The first case was done at 6, so you can imagine how early they got to theater to prepare for that. Their target is to do three surgeries per day until they leave by the weekend. It doesn't just start and end with the surgeries in theater. The care of the patients, the pharmacists that are standing online to provide the drugs are all local staff. And for the first time, I'd like to tell you that we've been able to transfer the skills to our peri-op nurses who are all local this time. So it has reduced the cost for them because they don't have to uh, fly in um, peri-op nurses for cardiac surgery because they've been able to transfer the skills. So this is one of the successes of this collaboration. And we look forward to having further collaborations like this so we can increase the number of missions we do annually and this will reduce the waiting time for parents and patients for these surgeries in our hospital. We had 45 patients on the list. So you can imagine if we would just be able to take 12 now, the next set of patients would have to wait until the next mission next year, which could be sometime between March uh, to April, depending on their schedules. So um, this is just an opportunity for you to know what we're doing and what we continue to do. And we would like uh, whatever help and support we can get to make it possible for us to do more. Wow, that was so thoughtful. We love you all. It was an emotional day of joy for a widow with four children. She was among the victims of the xenophobic attack who returned to Nigeria empty-handed. However, heaven smiled at her through the compassionate efforts of the chairman, Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Honorable Abike Dabiri Erewa, and multi-choice. She was empowered with one million naira to help start up an enterprise for herself and her children. Watch this. I thank every one of you. Well, there is no place like home. I'm happy to be back home in Nigeria. In South Africa, we are not safe. There are a lot of things we cannot even explain. It's like we are living in a wilderness. But we thank God we are back home. And I thank Mr. President, the owner of Epis, and Honorable Abuka Dabiri, for saving our life back home. So how has it been with you and your four children? Well, we are better here than when we are there. 
the economy there is bad, they won't allow us to treat us as that we are foreigners. There is no opportunity. But now we are home, we are better. And we will prevail being in Nigeria back home. There is no place like home. On arrival, as a widow with four children, um, some Nigerians have been offering to help. <laughs> so on behalf of uh, Multi-Choice Nigeria, we present to you a check of one million naira wow. for, you to, for you to be able to start your business, um, able to send your children to school, and we wish you all the very best. And then there's also scholarship for one of your children. So take any of the four children will be on scholarship. That's on behalf of the Nigeria Diaspora Commission. So all the best and uh, my, my pleasure to make this presentation. Because our case is very critical, a widow with four children. So apart from you know helping to set up with the business, courtesy of funds we receive from multi choice, we're we still reaching out to all the women and children that came back from South Africa. So we're going to contact them and see what we can also help out with. And then, generally speaking, for all returnees, we are working on a program with Spendan and NDE, where at the end of it all, they will be trained in a particular skill, and then they'll have some funds between one to ten million naira if they qualify to be able to start their business. So, like I said, we are not forgetting about them. President Buhari has instructed that we must ensure we follow up with them and ensure that we do all we can for them. The Nigerian government should do all they can for them. So, house is uh, is just the first one. There will be others. Every woman and uh, with their children, because they are special, they are women with children. We're going to call them next, and then the whole set of returnees will, that are interested in spending and ND programs will also be reaching out to them. I wish her the very best. And to all other returnees, the commission will be reaching you in batches. The next batch will be for the women and children. The federal government hasn't forgotten you and will ensure your full reintegration. Let's go on a quick break. Ha! Not so fast. Look, I'm tired. I want to check out of this country for greener pastures. Just calm down for a moment. Please sit down. <sighs> Do you have a job where you're going to? No, but someone is arranging, you know... Listen, uh, listen, listen, Alinko. Checking out of this country without proper planning means one thing. Unimaginable begin. Eh? You know, I've been in the diaspora, but legitimately doing great things at home and abroad. As I've been saying, without the proper footing abroad, the risk is not worth it. Listen, Alinko, it's better to be home than be trapped abroad. Or even end up in prison. As I said before the quick break, the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission is working tirelessly to ensure that all the returnees are fine and empowered. The chairman, NITCOM, had a meeting with the director of the Small and Medium Enterprise Development Agency of Nigeria, Smidan in Abuja, to discuss areas of collaboration and partnership between the agencies, especially in areas of capacity building for the victims of the xenophobic attack in South Africa who returned home recently. Here's how the meeting went. The issue of the Nigerians who just returned from South Africa as a result of xenophobic attacks. Finally, we received them, we made them welcome, we got some support from back of industry, you know, at least to keep them going. But we feel that they really need um, some training and support from Smedley. A lot of them, if I mention a lot of them, they are not criminals. Their only problem was that they were black and Nigerian. So because they came back with nothing, we want to continue to support them. And we've told Nigerians that don't think we'll receive them, we've forgotten about them. No, we have their names, we have their data, we're capturing them, we're liaising with them. I want to appeal to spend them, and we want to collaborate with you for uh, programs they can do to be able to reintegrate into the society. Um, and I don't think there's a better organization than yours. I know that every organization has issues with funding, but we're hoping that whatever you can you know, incorporate them into some of these skills acquisition, the programs you're doing, I'm sure it will be well appreciated. We received a total of 485 admitted back to Nigeria, and um, quite a number of them were women and minors. And then secondly, for Nigerians in the diaspora, generally speaking, 
Um, a lot of them also want to, you know, partner with you, you know, know what they can do, and they are willing to come back and do it. They are not asking for anything. They are asking for the platform to be able to give back to the society, to work with organizations that are like through the diaspora commission, so that we all can join hands in building um, a country of our dreams. We facilitate access to finance through the development banks of Nigeria, and we are happy that the CBN has a window now that uh, people, when they have their training with SMED and they can access funding from 1 million to up to 10 million naira. And I think this is one of the windows that if we put our heads together, we can work with the CBN governor, that those people, they should be given special attention, those people in diaspora, to, to really uh, key in into this program and they should be given priority and I think you need to also discuss with the CBN governor so that Smedan can train the entire 465 people that return from South Africa and a special attention should be given to them by the CBN so that they can access this funding and they can start a new life. As for us, I want to assure you that uh, Smedan is ready and willing to work with you at any time. And I think the first thing that we should do, since your legal woman is here, so that we can drop an MOU and we sign the MOU. I believe when the MOU is ready, we'll come down to your place and we sign the MOU. And after signing the MOU, we can start this process because uh, this is something that we have people ready that can be able to provide all this training to these women and children. And I believe uh, we, can, we can equally look at some of our programs that we have in the agency. I'm challenging the departments now to look at their programs and see where these people can fit into the programs. At least we don't have to take all of them because we have not planned for them. But if we can pick some part of them to, be, to enjoy some of these things that we are doing in Sweden, as for 2019 budget, let's try and come up with that. And uh, we have started this assignment uh, because I could remember as we were in San, San Silicon Valley yeah. in USA and we met with Nigerian business community and we were able to give them a lecture on how to come back to Nigeria and invest and see how they can create jobs and create wealth for the people in this country. And I will continue to do that at, at every forum that you are going. If you feel that there is need for us to go and provide any kind of uh, information that people there need, we may be ready to go. We take another short break. The diaspora continues shortly. Not so fast. Look, I'm tired. I want to check out of this country for greener pastures. Just calm down for a moment. Please sit down. <sighs> Do you have a job where you're going to? Uh, no, but someone is arranging, you know. Listen, uh, listen, listen, Alinko. Checking out of this country without proper planning means one thing. Unimaginable begin. Eh? You know, I've been in the diaspora, but legitimately, doing great things at home and abroad. As I've been saying, without the proper footing abroad, the risk is not worth it. Listen, Alinko, it's better to be home than be trapped abroad or even end up in prison. Welcome back from that short break. You know, it's such a joy to see my brothers and sisters in the diaspora making waves. Here are just a few. Our diaspora delight this week is Masai Ujiri, the Nigerian who led Toronto Raptors to a historic NBA victory. Masai Ujiri, Raptors president of basketball operations, changed the face of the team when he brought the San Antonio Spurs Kawhi Leonard, an NBA champion and a three-time NBA All-Star to Toronto last summer. Ujiri was born in England on the 7th of July, 1970, to a Nigerian father and a Kenyan mother. 
He was raised in Zaria, Kaduna State, until he moved to the United States to attend high school with an ambition of playing college basketball. He also promotes basketball development across Africa as director of the NBA's Basketball Without Borders program. Proudly Nigerian. Nigerians are making waves around the globe. And here is a segment I love so much. Kudos to the Nigerian government and the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission. And also not forgetting our citizens with a heart of gold. Take a look at the patriotic display by the Osho State First Lady, Mrs. Kafayat Oyetola. Through her foundation, she reached out to Mr. Ojo and his six-year-old daughter who were stranded in Trinidad and Tobago. Take a look. A Nigerian in Trinidad and Tobago by name Seso Ojo. I'm going to interview him now. He's a homeless and he wants to go back to Nigeria. So we want him to go viral so that he will have a help to go and see his family and also go to Nigeria and take good care of himself. What is your name? Uh, my name is... Uh, Speak Benjamin, louder. Benjamin Sesson Ojo. I'm from uh, Elisha Osun State. Can you speak Yoruba? Yeah. Uh, I'm uh, Sesson Benjamin Sesson Ojo. I'm from um, Elisha in Latin Osun State. So what are you doing in Trinidad and Tobago now? We well, have been trained out for 12 years, but recently, three years ago, I started to sit and uh, one part of my body is getting the vein on the part of the body getting smaller more than the other side. All you want now is help to go back home to yeah. Nigeria, right? Yeah. Okay, now, nah. so dear Nigerians, this is uh, one of our brothers in Trinidad and Tobago. He need help from Trinidad and Tobago and also need help in Nigeria in general. And he need help from the embassy. We want this video to go viral so that it will help. It will help in to facilitate his traveling to Nigeria. The ticket from Trinidad and Tobago to Nigeria is about 3,000 US, which he don't have. So we need help. Him to himself need help so that we too, that we see him with support for him to go. I want it to go viral. So do you have anything to tell the Nigerian and the Yorubas? Just speak in Nigerian and also in uh, Yoruba. Well, the only thing I would like to say is that I need the help of the Nigerians, brothers and sisters, to assist me here. All over the world, right? I'm not working and uh, I'm reporting to almost everybody. I need help to survive, to eat, to when I go back to Nigeria. Can you speak a little Yoruba for your brothers? Yeah, um, I am a Okay, cool. Now I get you now, right? Let them see your body and see that you are really sick. You understand? that you are, you are not feeling good yeah you understand so yes. nigerians please let's help it's worse more than that yeah what let's help see. him and let him go home please wow so touching we can always offer a helping hand thanks for being a part of the show and remember you can reach us on all our social media platforms on facebook at nigerians in diaspora commission on Twitter at Nidcom underscore gov, on Instagram at Nidcom underscore gov, and on our website at Nidcom underscore gov dot ng. I am Coinsola at Datesumbi. See you next week.